What's cracking? What's cracking, YouTube? What's the haps? You know what it is. It's your boy, Marl High Hustle, coming back to you with another one. Shit, we on lunch. You know, thought I'd bring you another one. You know what I mean? Another little, little dealio. YouTube kind of mad at me, though, right now, man. They, uh, they age-restricted my last video, which I don't really understand. I was, um... That was a PG, that was a PG-13, PG-13 video, man. There was mild cuss words, so got to really be careful. They're a little upset with me right now. I got to gotta kind of watch it, but uh, it's crazy because you see other stuff kind of gory and stuff, and I'm like, man, what am I doing wrong? But it is what it is, you know what I mean? We ain't going to cry. We're not going to, we're not going to bitch. Like, we don't do that, so, um. You know, respects to every one of you. Thank you for rocking with your boy, man. Thank you for tapping in. Uh, I love all the feedback I've been getting, man. I'm, I appreciate you, each and every one of you. So, before we get started, man, hit that like, comment, hit that bell notification, you know, so you get all the future content that I'm going to drop. Um, so, today I'm going to talk about a, a little, uh, little uh, altercation that was uh, up in the correctional facility when I went in I was already probably like uh two years into my sentence and uh I was in Centennial Correctional Facility so I, I've kind of told you all you know my cousin was up there before me he had a uh, he had copped like a 20 28 year for uh a second degree uh you know what I'm saying uh he sent someone to the to the other side so in the second degree and uh my cousin was already serving a good stint man when i pulled up when i was in buny um you know people say you, you got to get certified people got to get ready to know who you are but you know when, when you've already had a rent from the streets and, and you pull up there and, and a lot of your homies are already in in the joint people pretty much already know who you are when they see numerous guys like flock to you or rap to you or show you love they they know you're pretty much certified you know what i'm saying so that's kind of how it was when i pulled up in buny there was already a lot of homies that i had known that we had uh we had uh been in things in the streets you know what i'm saying some some uh foes and some friends but um yeah you're pretty much already you know you go in there already street certified man um you already have that stamp on you now sometimes there are people that pull up and no really really knows them you know maybe a smaller hood or you know hadn't had much interaction with a lot of colorado homies you know what i mean but when i pulled up in buny there was quite a few uh dudes along with my cousin he was already there and he had already kind of set a standard and made a name for himself he had already put hands on a few people so they already knew he wasn't you know one to really be played with so that kind of set the tone when i got there but this is later on this is like a, a year and a half two years after the fact and uh, what was crazy is uh, in Centennial, they had like a, a sweat lodge. So in Centennial, you're locked down pretty much 20, you know, 24 sevs almost. You're, you're out a little bit. You don't have much um, time, you know, to be getting out of yourself. You don't have a job. You're locked down all the way until I believe four. And then they let you out at like three, four o'clock. And then you're out till like maybe 9, 30, 10. And then they would lock you down. I think 9 and then like 10, 10, 30 on the weekends. That's how it was when I was there. Uh, Centennial was still single south. It was a hold closed facility, which was a, a level four. Basically, uh, your next step was uh, at SEG and uh, CSP. Centennial was actually the old CSP before they opened the new one. So it was the old um, administrative segregation. So when I pulled up in Centennial, like I said, it was single south and... Uh, I'd start going to the sweat lodge, man. Start going to the sweat lodge with the Native Americans. And um, it first started, when I first started going there, it was uh, the homie Colton. You know, he, he was the homie then. He didn't he didn't stay the homie. He ended up being a little um, kind of a levi, you know what I mean? But um, so Colton was going to the sweat lodge. Um, this is where we would go handle business if uh, you had to talk or chop it up with somebody. And... Um, and if you had issues, you know what I mean? If you, you guys wanted to throw hands, you would go in there. They would. It was crazy because they would have that drum in there, boom, boom, and everyone would be singing. Uh, Native American, you know, they'd be doing their Native American songs and beating that drum, so you'd be able to go in that blind spot and uh, 
get your issue, you know what I mean? Your your catch a fade and you wouldn't be able to hear nobody getting cracked. So it was kind of a way. But the cops had already become hip to it, you know what I mean? And uh so that's how I ended up getting word of the, the Native American, started getting into that kind of uh deal and uh began to go outside and do uh sweats and stuff. So you were able to stay out like six, seven hours. Um during these sweats you would uh you would stay out there for a while, you know, and that, that was the gr pretty good deal. You know, they go out and lock you in like a 20 by 20 cage with the other dudes. And they had an anipi. They had their wood, their firewood, and they would burn the rocks and then bring them in. You sweat. You sit out there all day, man. We'd be out there till like, I believe, like 10 in the morning till 5, 530 in the afternoon, 6 o'clock in the afternoon uh, doing the sweat. So when I got there, the Native Americans, they wasn't doing too good, man. Their their, their money was kind of short. They didn't really have a, what they needed to do their ceremonies. So when I got there, you know, it was it was, it was was this way for a minute. They wouldn't even let you out to the sweat lodge. You weren't able out to go out and sweat. So my cousin pulls up, and that's another story, but he pulls up, man, and he's always, like, got a scheme. He was a hustler, too, man. He's always got some kind of scheme on how to get some money and... Um, get his dough so you know this is the time in like the 90s when when they had stopped the cigarettes cigarettes were very scarce and it was the end um you you were able, when they stopped it you were able to have what you had for so long and then they came and took whatever left if you didn't have they gave you a certain date to get rid of all of it so there was really no cigarettes anymore and uh what had happened is uh Louis had got with the pipe carrier, the guy who was running the, the um, running the ceremonies out there, and um, they had chopped it up, and Louis had made a deal with him, because the only ones who were able to have tobacco were the Native Americans for their rituals. So Louis chops it up with this dude still day. He's the pipe carrier. He runs the whole thing. They didn't have their loot. So what Louis does is devise a plan to say, hey, you know what? I'll get you all your stuff you need for your ceremonies, and we'll uh, we'll we'll uh, take care of all that. But in return, you're gonna have to break us off some bugler, man. So what my cousin did, he would order like four cans of bugler. He'd give them one. He'd keep three. He'd order them their firewood and everything and all their stuff that they needed to do their ceremonies, whatnot. So that all got shipped in. Louis got his three cans they got theirs and uh louis persists to start uh selling smokes man he's he keeps a can he smokes big you know and uh he starts selling the smokes and you know everything's cool for a while you know native americans are cool because they have their meetings so what happens during this time is uh like what always happens when with haters you know what i mean and uh you know how it goes, man. People see you coming up or they, they didn't think of what you thought of and they had a way to do it but didn't have the means. And, you know, they start hating. So that's pretty much what happened. Louis started making a come up on these smokes and these cigarettes and uh, they didn't like it. Uh, still, they was kind of upset. Louis would go out to the, the facility, out to the sweat lodge. And if you guys have been to Centennial, if you've ever been to Centennial, as you're going out, and you go up to the yard off to the left is a big like 20 by 20 steel cage i don't know that's how it was when i was there so it was fenced off 20 by 20 that's where the native americans did their thing right before you go up to the yard and then you would walk up a hill and there's your yard flatten out and um so louis would go out there on these saturday mornings and he would just get in a wheelbarrow and sit there and sunbathe and smoke big cigarettes like he was chief jay strongbow so these native americans started like hating talking amongst each other they didn't like it too much, you know what I mean? So at this time, there was a few of us going to this Native American, you know, thing. We were Northsiders, uh, my cousin Louie, Colton. My cousin Louie and Colton didn't really get along. They were both NSMs. But uh, Colton had kind of burned bread on some some older vatos that were that were kind of from, uh, from uh, NSM. And those were my cousin's boys, and my cousin was loyal to them. So my cousin didn't like how dude was running his jibs about, you know, the homie lunatic and come of the the other homies. You know what I mean? Uh, I wasn't NSM, so it really wasn't my gig. But I, I got along with Colton for the most part, man, and thought he was a solid dude until he wasn't. So my Col Colton and my cousin really weren't feeling each other. 
So my cousin would just go out there, mind his own business, smoke up while everyone was doing the sweat lodge thing. And no big deal. So one day, man, there's this little dude, Frankie Gallardo. And he wasn't really little, man. He was an Indio. And I believe he had a life sentence. He was with his, he was with the business, man. I knew Frankie. He was, a, he was a little fighter, man. And Frankie had skills. But what made Frankie unique is he had that cardio, man. He can go. I used to work out with this boy, and he just didn't get tired, man. He didn't get tired on the weights. We'd, we'd go, man. This dude, can, he can go. And I was cool with Frankie. Me and Frankie were cool. You know, I, I watched him tune up some dudes, some dudes that I thought could really fight. He he tuned up this dude in B-Pod, and, and I was like, damn, kid kid got hands. You know, kid kid can go. So he's an Indio. So Frankie gets told by Still Day to check Louie about all this stuff. So Frankie decides to wait till we go out to Sweat Lodge and he brings it to Louie and tells him, hey man, we don't want you out here no more. We feel you're disrespecting the culture and you ain't, uh, we don't like how you're doing things. So my cousin kind of laughs at him and was like, uh, you know what, homie, you weren't able to do your, your whole things. How am I disrespecting? If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't even be able to come out here and, and do your little, your little, uh, <coughs> rituals man it wasn't for me you guys be sitting up in that visiting room just beating your drum like you beat your meat kind of clowned on it <coughs> so they start having words and lo and behold they square up so louis man louis was a uh, he was he was he was a lot bigger at this time the boy was starting to indulge in those uh double stuffed oreos and them doritos a little too much and he Started getting like your boy is right now, you know, a little chunky, you know what I mean? Little little on that bigger side. But we in our 20s. So uh, him and Louie get down, man. Louis, Louis hits him with a three-piece. Louis catches him with a three-piece and a biscuit. Bop, 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 and puts him on his knees. And he's all like wobbled. On a and then Louis gets back and it's like, really? Is that it, homie? Is that, that's all you got? Kind of laughs at him. So Frankie kind of comes through and they start getting it again. And Louis, Louis has him and Louis got him up against the fence and he's, you know, he's hitting him. And Louis trying to like push him up the fence and throw him in the Constantine wire. And he has him halfway up there, man. He has him almost literally into that Constantine wire. And uh, Louis gasses out, man. And Frankie gets Louis in a guillotine. And um, Frankie's on top of Louis. No, Louis's on top of Frankie and Frankie got Louis in a guillotine, like an MMA guillotine move. And I could hear my cousin gurgling, bro. And the, the crazy thing is, I was cool with Frankie, man. I didn't want to do anything foul to him. But that's my primo, you know what I mean? And and I was like, hey, homie, you need to let him go. And my cousin's like, man, Conrad, get him off me. I can hear my cousin gurgling. So I can imagine he was getting choked pretty good. And I, I told Frankie, let him go, man. So that, remind you, there's like 20, 20 cats up in this cage thing, getting ready to do this service. And uh, Frankie's like, no. And I basically tell Frankie, hey, homie, let him go. I won't let him crack you because he's on top of you. I'm not going to let him crack you. I'm going to pull him off. And Frankie's uh, words to me was, F you, homie. So what I do is I drop my right knee right on Frankie's face because he's literally on his back. And when I do that, I drop it, my knee on his face. He lets go of Louie, and I, I drive him. I start driving him with like three or four punches. Boom, 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 boom. And he gets up. He's wild. He's rocked hard, man. My cousin sits down, he's trying to catch his breath, and I'm basically watching all these Indians. They're they're pissed that this happened. They ain't, ain't no nothing's happened yet. We just this is just us. And so Frankie gets up and he he like he's he staggers, staggers up into the up into the the outhouse. There's an outhouse out there. And he gets a roll of toilet paper and he comes out and he's holding his face and all this sangre is coming out of him. He's 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 got sangre kind of profusely all over his face. You know, and he's holding a, a big roll of toilet paper onto his face. And he's me and him are having words. And he's like, well, what's up? And I'm like, well, what's up, homie? And uh, we start getting it. We start getting it. And all the Indians, ooh, and then all the Mexicans, ooh, and it just becomes a, it just becomes a free-for-all, man. Now, mind you, there's sticks, there's boards, there's big, big, big river rocks. And, uh. We commence to start grabbing these things, man. We're, we're throwing them, you know, uh, and we're just we're just going to war, man. And uh, 
It was kind of crazy, you know. Everything kind of slows down in that moment, you know what I mean? Dudes are throwing rocks at each other. We're hitting each other with big old sticks. And so uh, this the still day, this, the pipe carrier, it was crazy, bro, because he was like, I don't know what he was thinking, but he was like, he was pulling out some, I don't know if he thought he was pulling some power out of the sky, but he was all, ah, like he was trying to pull some power out of the sun. And I cracked this boy with a big old river rock right in his ribs. Poof, and he was like, oh, dude went down. So we just kept getting it, brother. Well, one of these vatos was a Westwood Hood. His name was Jake Chavez, I believe. He goes and he, he lets out this cry like, ah, oh, what are you guys doing? He's like, this guy got life, man. He's got life and he's screaming because we're, we're just uh, maiming each other. You know what I mean? So I get in the corner. I'm like, shut up, fool. You need to be quiet. Shut up. So the cops hadn't came out. This is going down for about good 10 minutes, 15 minutes. So when he lets out this cry... Supposedly, there was a, a technician, a DOC technician working on an air conditioner out on top of one of the units. And I want to say he was on either G unit. I think he would have been on G unit. And he heard us. So he calls down in the control center. Well, the dude in the control center, he was a baboso, I guess, and he, he passed out. He was supposed to be watching us on the cameras. This bato passed out. So he ain't even knowing what's going on. He gets up. They start radioing all the, all the cops. Here comes, here comes the DOC staff, and they're outside the gates, man, and, and there's just carnage, man. There's carnage everywhere. People are bleeding. You know, still day, man, uh, this dude from uh, Azteca, his name was Scarecrow. He was, him and still they kind of got into it, and, uh, you know, still they picked up one of them rocks towards the end of it, and he chucks it, and, and, and it was crazy because uh, Scarecrow was running along the fence line. And he went to duck like he was going to duck the rock. But what he actually did was duck right into the rock. And it hit him in the back of the ear right here. Cracked his ass. He hits the fence. Boom, because he was close to the fence. It splits him here. Pretty much gets split on the same exact place on either both sides. One from the rock, one from the fence. And he falls. KOs him. Boom. And when he falls, he falls on his hand and snaps his wrist. His wrist snaps. Crack. So this dude is the one maimed out of mo probably out of everybody he had the most. He was bleeding, man. We picked him up. He there was blood all over. Uh, picked him up, sat him down. The cops are like kind of hesitant to get in the fence. Everything's kind of calming down. Nobody really wants to go anymore. Everyone's tired, and you know there's people but got hit with rocks and <laughs> all the fights out of them already. You know, 15, 15, 13, 15 minutes in a hell in the cell. It's it's kind of crazy. So it goes, man, we, we, they, they get it all settled out. The cops finally open up and start taking us out one at a time. They take Scarecrow to the, to the, um, infirmary. Couple guys go to the infirmary and, uh, we go back to the, to the unit, man. And, and me and my cousin are kind of looking at each other and, and he's all raged up. He's all in a rage and, uh, he's fired up, man, which is crazy. Cause, uh, Dude gassed out, bro. Let's be honest. He gassed out, homie. If it wasn't for me, you about to get killed, homie. And um, he gassed out. This is where me and him kind of had a fallout, man. He was. I was like, man, I'm not doing this no more. This is this shit is is bull. You know what I mean? This is crazy. And he's like, man, you got weak, homie. I never thought I'd say this to you. You got weak. And I was like, dude, you got 28 years, homie. You and I understand. If I had 28 years, I'd be wanting everybody in pain just like me too. I get it. I didn't have that much time, man. I, I had light, you know what I mean? And I was like, bro, I'm not I'm not doing this dumb. I don't care about this stuff. I don't care about any of these fools, homie. I'll be honest with you. So my mindset was already changing, man. I was thinking of the streets. I wasn't thinking about that place anymore. And um, it's crazy, man. I lost a lot of homies because of this thing. Uh, my cousin, uh, Louie, was... Uh, he ended up going to the hole because he had blood all over him. He had some chings on him real good. So they took him to the hole for under investigation. They took me in the hole, but I was only in there like two days. He ended up, I came back to my unit. They let him out. They sent him to G unit. I was in D. So I go to the para, I was a para pro. So I go to the school the next day and Colton and all them fools are in there. And um, it's kind of crazy. You know, Colton's kind of upset. He's like, oh, bro, I don't, I don't know why you jumped in fools. You know, that, 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 that was, that was a. Uh, that was weak, homie, what you did. Like, he was trying to down me for, like, getting my cousins back. Like, telling me, we, I don't jump people. 
Now, those of you that are from the 90s and know NSMs, these motherfuckers was notorious for jumping fools. That's what they did. That was their first steal. When they used to get down, the NSMs used to jump homies left and right. That, they, they, like, made a name for themselves for jumping fools. So, he was over here telling me he's a warrior and he don't jump nobody and he gets down, win, lose, or draw. And this, this, and that. And he's this and he's that. So, kind of took offense to it i was like bro you know what i don't really care what you think i don't really care about your your uh that whole stuff you just said i really don't care about it that's my family homie and i'd be danged if i'm gonna go home and look my family in the eye look my uncle in the eye and let you know that i let his son and my grandma's grandson get hurt on my watch you know what i'm saying what am I going to look like getting out of there and, and, and he's up in there maimed? Someone laid him out. Now, you know, here's the story. He ended up getting killed a lot later in life. And uh, he lived just the way he wanted to, man. That's what he wanted to do and that's the that's the that's what he wanted to push. And he ended up paying full price for it. Real talk, man. Am I upset about it? Yeah, I get upset about it every now and then. But here's the facts. He didn't want to change, man. He didn't want to. He thought he was going to be the craziest killer ever to walk up in DLC. And it didn't play out like that. So, you know what, I ended up losing some good friends, man. Colton, I really took disrespect to what he said and was like, you know what, bro, I really don't care about anything you think. Uh, I'm about my homie and my family comes first and I ain't gonna watch my family get hurt and that's a fact. So, like I said, Louie got killed later on in the day and this whole thing transpires into another thing and I'll touch base on another uh, video on that about how I lost good homies. Um, basically, what they say is I, I betrayed the North for, for LPP. Now we'll get into this, okay? This is gonna be another story. I can't, but it will come in from this story how this all transpires. So Colton basically told me, you know, I don't jump people this, this, and that. I told him basically you can kiss my ass. Um, we were never really the same after that. A lot of shadiness and uh, I started seeing a lot of people's uh, true colors. And um, that's what happened, you know what I mean? It was the first riot I was ever in. Um, didn't get hurt real bad. And I'm not going to sit here and say I'm the baddest cat on the yard because I'm not. I'm probably one of the luckiest, man. I didn't get hit with no rock like like, uh, like old Scarecrow. You know, I could have got crumbled just like that, man. We was throwing big-ass rocks at each other and it could have been bad. But didn't turn out that way for me. You know, I actually learned from the lesson. Did it stop me from getting in another altercation like that? No, it didn't. I actually got in another one in Bank County, and I'll let you know about that one. Um, but, yeah, that was the first uh, little um, melee I was in in, uh, in, the, in the prison. It was uh, definitely an eye-opener and let you know that uh, anything could happen up in there. Real talk. Uh, Mickey Cabral was up in there. Uh, in that in that same riot George Chavez there was a bunch of us man there was a bunch of uh, what's crazy is we found out Steel Day was a, a political prisoner from Minnesota and he was actually a, a informant so that's why they had him over there in, in Centennial they actually did like an interstate compact where they switched prisoners with some from Minnesota so what you don't know about uh, like Colorado prison system if you got kind of weird old charges or you're your like case was really in the media and there possibly you can get harmed for that. They kind of protect you. They'll send you to out of state and change your name. Um, so nobody can really find you. They've done it. But uh, yeah, that's the first one I was in. This was roughly around the 98, uh, 98, 99 time. I remember because the Broncos had won their second Super Bowl against the Atlanta Falcons. And this was around the Columbine time. So yeah, man, just a little melee. Um, stopped going to the sweat lodge after that. Frankie got out, and uh, it's crazy because I was a para pro in the school. Frankie was actually one of my students, and um, after he got out of the hole, man, and uh, came back to school, he kind of wanted, you know, I guess he he wanted something with your boy, and I, I kind of let him know, like whatever you want to do, homie. Like he never jumped off. He just knew that I was ready. Um, never jumped off. We kind of had a mutual respect for each other. When they finally did open the sweat lodge back up after like eight months, we went out there and which was crazy, man, is uh, there was a bird right in the middle of a neepy just dead. Like a bird fell out of the sky and just landed in the middle of that prey thing. That's where they pray. And um, 
from what those Indians were saying, they had to tear the whole thing down and rebuild it. And it was like bad, bad karma or whatever. And I get it. We spilled blood on that, that ground there. It was considered sacred to them. Um, I used to do it to pass time, but uh, ended up turning out to be, you know, some Mexican warriors against some Indian warriors. And uh, the Mexican warriors came out on top, man. Real talk. But uh, it was a little melee. Anything could have happened. Anyone could have got hurt. Just uh, one day in the crazy life of time I was doing in prison. Um, definitely was an eye-opener for me. So, you know, like I said, my cousin ended up losing his life like several years later after I had left. And um, I could only protect him for so long, you know. But with that being said, you know, you know what it is. This is the Mile High Hustle. Hope you like the story. If you have any questions drop them in the comments i'll be happy to answer them, man we'll touch in it we'll make it a whole nother uh video but with that being said this is the mile high hustle and i'm out